Have you seen kindergarten and first graders using the stencils to create geometry people? This project supports those learning skills and integrates technology too. Geometric shapes like this are a lot more relevant and fun to learn about when kids can add color and move them around to make their own characters. Let me show you some examples. I'm going to clear the drawing area here. And I'm going to open up an image of those shapes that we've already started to fill with some color. Now, one example of how a kindergarten or first grade teacher can, can uh, proceed with a project like this is for them to actually create a page of, of images like this or use the ones that we've created. And then the students can just use the bucket. They can choose from the different color cards that are here. And they can fill the different shapes with color and choose the, their own colors to really personalize this and to make it fun for them. But they can also draw their own shapes. And that will help reinforce all the geometric attributes that you're teaching them about geometry and all the different shapes. So to do a rectangle or a square, they would choose on the rectangle function, and then the square subcommand, choose a color, click and drag. And I'd actually like you to watch inside this area right here, which is our feedback area. You'll see that these numbers change as it's moving because it's actually recording the size of it. So if we wanted a two inch square, I could just drag that until it's two inches and then click. Now for kindergarten and first graders, you probably don't care as much about the size of it as the fact that they're just recognizing the shapes. But for older students, when they're working further into geometry, you might want them to uh, really learn the precision and be very precise with what they're creating. Now with rectangles, we would choose the rectangle subcommand, choose a color, click, and that rectangle can go in any direction and be as thick, as long, as wide as they want. So let's make a long and narrow one. Circles work the same way. They're going to use the circle subcommand, pick a color, drag, and it's dragging from the center point out. An ellipse, same way. It can be long and narrow, short and fat. You can practically make a circle if you want. What shapes? Now, to do other shapes like triangles and pentagons and hexagons and octagons, we would use the line tool. Again, if you watch the feedback area here, you're going to see the length of the line. And once we draw one line, we'll also over here, we'll be seeing the angle between the two lines. So I'm going to click on a color, drag. And if you see, this line is now 2 and 3 quarter inches long. If I drag this back and I watch that to be 2 and 3 quarter inches again, I've created an isosceles triangle. So that's something that can be introduced to the students when you're starting to teach them to define the sides and the angles of triangles is that they watch that feedback area to really draw very precise triangles. As far as following the angles, I can watch this to make sure that it's 60 degrees and I can create an equilateral triangle by watching the lines and, and the angle sizes. So there's a lot of opportunities for them to be able to play around with the line tool and with the shape tools to be able to draw their own shapes and to do them in color, which really makes them fun and come to life. But let's really make them come to life now by creating our own characters. So it really only takes two functions, the auto frame and the copy, to start creating their own characters. So let's start out by choosing a head. I'm going to click auto frame, click inside a shape and then copy it. Auto frame, click inside that shape, and copy it. So the kids could work from either shapes that they've created, shapes that you give them, that they color. They can play around with still going in later and then changing the colors on those if they want the shorts of this guy to be a different color. Grabbing the right shapes to make that character look the way they want him to. Copy here. Now when they go to copy an arm like this, for instance, you're going to show them that they really don't want the arm going that way, probably. I mean, maybe they want their arm up in the air like that. But if they wanted it down and mirrored that side, they could click the mirror button. And that's actually showing symmetry over the y-axis, 
which is another math function that you can be teaching them at an early age that's going to be something that they're going to continue to learn more about later. If we wanted to give them a hat, I can copy the hat. Maybe I don't want it to be pink. Let's pick a different color. Maybe the same orange as his shorts. And put a feather in his cap. And put shoes on his feet. There's so much that you can do with these shapes that just make it fun and very creative for them to work with. If they want eyes, they can work with the little shapes like this, but maybe they don't want the uh, that light purple color anymore. Copy the eyes and bring it in. And when they're all done, I'm going to frame it and either save it or print it. Or don't you think it would really be fun if the class created a PowerPoint presentation of all these characters and presented them to another class? Imagine kindergartners or first graders how proud they would be to put this together as a presentation and have another first grade class come into the classroom and sit on the rug and watch this presentation. So let's actually copy this to the clipboard the same way that we did in Word. And now I'm going to go to a, a different PowerPoint presentation that I set up. We're going to click on a blank screen, right click and click paste, bringing that image in. It usually comes in too big. So we're going to make it smaller. And it sometimes slides off the page, so we're just going to find it and move it back in here again. And now we've created a little story of geometry characters. And can you imagine now the students could stand up and they could talk about the different shapes, what shapes they used for which part of the character. And they could be using the language of geometry and doing that kind of a presentation and also start to get comfortable with doing oral speaking. It gives them really a fun chance to be creative, too. I hope I've been able to show you a meaningful representation of how valuable graphic toolbox is in the classroom, how it will help you to meet core curriculum standards, and how vital this technology is for preparing your students to be competitive in this highly visual world. I hope that you see that the possibilities are endless on how Graphics Toolbox can be implemented across all subjects and with all ages and all learning levels. You can see more projects and learn more on our website at www.greatsoftwaretools.com. As passionate as we are to help schools integrate this valuable technology into their classrooms, we're equally dedicated to helping people learn to use Graphics Toolbox. A perfect way to get started is with our Getting Started with Graphics Toolbox tutorial videos. They take you step by step through four popular projects. They run about 45 to 60 minutes long, but they're set up in chapters so you can stop and start as needed. We suggest that you have the video and Graphics Toolbox open at the same time. Watch part of the video, pause it, toggle to Graphic Toolbox, try out the technique, then go back to the video and watch more. People have found these to be a great way to learn the program. Okay. Bye-bye and thanks for coming.